In this video I'm going to talk about putting a stop bubble on a hostile POS and um, this is going to be a POS that actually has guns active. This is a little bit more of an advanced sort of thing to do. It only works in wormhole space and nullsec and um, it involves knowledge of how interdiction works and how grids work. So if you don't know how those things work um, Maybe later on I'll make videos on those uh, concepts, but for right now I'm going to assume you at least have some knowledge of how those uh, two mechanics work. I'll go over some of the finer details, but the assumption here is that you understand those in general. Um, in this particular situation, we have uh, two Tengus ratting in a C3 hole that's attached to this worm hole. So what I've done is I've warped to the POS that they live in at 100 um, kilometers from the hole that we expect them to come in from. So I've warped from the hole that they're going to enter system from to their POS. Also, um, if you look on the clip, we actually had their ship maintenance array bookmarked, and it's important that you bookmark the area that they're going to land at in the POS. You can't just you know bookmark the stick itself unless they're landing at the stick itself. You need to actually be warping to the um, the point in the POS that your targets are intending to warp to. Uh, I just labeled that bookmark 1, and um, now I warp back to the C3 that we're expecting them to come from, and I warp to the bookmark that I originally created just outside the POS, and I warp to that bookmark at 100 again. And I'm going to repeat this process a total of five times. So whenever I land, um, 100 away from the bookmark, that's 100 away from their POS, I'll be 200 kilometers away from their POS. Um, you know, I could set a bubble right here, but it's actually most likely, you know, depends on their particular POS configuration, but mo most likely it'll be in POS range, and I think that the POSs will actually shoot at the bubbles. So even if you're okay with fighting, you know, under POS guns at range, I think I haven't tested this, I probably should have tested it before I made the video, but I think I've done it before and the POS will actually shoot the bubble, so I don't think that's really an option. And in order to be out of range, you really need to be like more than 300 kilometers away. Um, I know that I've been tagged at you know something like 300 kilometers away from a POS before. Uh, so here I go and I, I work you know, to the second bookmark that I've made, or the bookmark that's 200 kilometers away from. Uh, the ship maintenance array that these guys will land at and I'm going to work to that one at 100 and this will put me about 300 off the pause um, and then I'll do this a couple more times but once you hit I, I really think um, it's at about 400 kilometers maybe 350 or something like that but you'll actually go off grid of the pause and um, I'll show how you how you deal with that whenever we get to that point as well um, but you could also just, you know, mental note for yourself here, you could also deal with it at this point when you're making the 300 kilometer bookmark in anticipation of it. Um, you know, but, and I mean, I know that this is a little bit of a long process, but in practice, you know, in EVE things kind of take a while. So these guys are ratting, and in the five minutes that it takes to set up this chain of bookmarks, they're, you know, they're not going to start and then be finished and then come back. And uh, these guys actually do come back a little bit soon. I can't remember if they get, I think they get spooked or something by um, maybe our scout in the C3. But it, in any case, there's plenty of time to do this in most cases, even though it might seem like it takes forever. Um, and then being in a bomber also is very advantageous because it, you know, it's, it's not the quickest warping ship, but it's better than, you know, some of the cloaky cruisers that you might otherwise do this with. Um, also, in terms of bubbles that you want to anchor here, if you're careful about making sure that you're warping to the area where the ships, where you know your targets are going to warp, you can get away with using Tech 2 small bubbles. I don't think that Tech 1 small, oh, and you can see by the way here, I've warped um, to, I think this is the 400 kilometer bookmark, um, but I'm off grid of the POS now. And uh, if you understand their addiction mechanics, then you know that the bubble won't work if I just place it here right now as it is, because um, the bubble won't be on grid with the POS, so the ships will just go straight through the bubble. Um, and I'll, I'll show how to deal with that in just a minute. But 
you need to use, um, in my opinion at least, Tech 2 smalls are larger. Uh, mediums will work fine. Uh, but I think, you know, training, a lot of people I know really groan whenever it comes to training propulsion jamming 5 to get the Tech 2 bubbles. But I mean, you need it for interdictors anyway, and interdictors are a very useful ship to have if you do this sort of work. So, uh, in my opinion, you know, people should just bite the bullet and train um, propulsion jamming 5 so that they can get the Tech 2 bubbles. Anyways, here I'm making um, what will be my final bookmark, and this bookmark will be 500 kilometers from the POS. And this is where I intend to catch the, uh, the targets. And I can't remember, but I think I go ahead and just anchor the bubble here. But I'm not done yet because I do need to um, fix the grid. Yeah, so I, I uh, make this as my final bookmark. And then, okay, yeah, so what I do is I immediately just work to the 300 bookmark. Now this bookmark is going to be on grid with the POS, so you can see as I land, I'll, I, I'm not on grid with the POS, and then as I land, I'm suddenly on grid with the POS, you know, I work to be on grid with the POS. And I just drop a can here, that's all you really have to do. Um, I do a line out because, like I said, the POS can hit you from this far. But I go ahead and just drop a can here, and what that does is it will actually extend the grid, so that at that point, my 500 kilometer bookmark will be on grid. And like I said, the um, the 500 kilometer, I mean, this can right here could be dropped whenever you make the 300 kilometer bookmark. You don't actually have to make the 500 kilometer bookmark first. Um, but anyways, what what ended up, what ended up happening here is just as I was about to drop the can to extend the grid, I got the call that one of the Tengus was heading back into their home system. So I didn't want to, you know, be dropping a can on grid, and there's no way that my bubble is going to get off in time. So I work back to the hole to, um, you know, potentially tackle this Tengu that's coming back. Uh, but by the time I land, I'm, you know, I'm not sure that I can actually get him. You know, I probably could have in hindsight, um, but, you know, I figure better safe than sorry. You know, one of the Tengus is still in the hole, and uh, so we're, I decided just to we'll wait here and, you know, try to catch the next one. Um, but the next one doesn't actually come back and the guy that's here will end up switching into a coercer and with the the mobile tractor units that have been out for a while now people have not you know they've stopped using noctuses and typically will just use a salvaging destroyer instead and that's what ends up happening here and I actually I run into the wormhole here don't do this guys this is a good example of what not to do um, but that doesn't seem to phase these guys maybe they just don't notice or something um, so I just wait here, expecting, you know, maybe for the other Tengu to come back through, you know, but, but like I said, you know, that's that's not what actually happens here. Um, so I do go ahead, and uh, later on I decide to stick the, the bubble up, and remember, you want to put the bubble at, like, your 500 kilometer bookmark, you don't want it to be too close to the pot. So even though there's, like, a brief intermission here, I'm going to go back to that 500 kilometer bookmark, once the sky leaves system, and I'm going to plant the bubble back there, and um, make sure that the grid is is all squared away and everything. Uh, as for where you would want to use this, in this case, we're putting the stop bubble between a C3 hull and here's the um, the core cylinder in the ghost salvage. In this case, we're putting the bookmark between the C3 hull and the the guy's pause. This is not really you know, the standard situation in which you would want to use this. I mean, it, it can work fine, and you can do it this way. If we were to tackle the Tengu as it came through the hole, you know, we'd have to worry about polarity timers. In this case, they'd be in our favor, but, you know, we'd have to worry about polarity timers and um, making sure that we maintain tackle as they jump back and forth through holes, and that can, you know, end poorly sometimes, but the stop bubble doesn't work all the time either. You know, they might bounce to um, attack or something like that. Uh, although I, I do think it ends up being a more reliable method, it's still not, you know, the, you know, canonical sort of example. I think more more likely is, um, and this, by the way, here I'm landing at the 300 kilometer bookmark so I can finish putting the can down. Um, I approach the bookmark here, you don't need to do that. But anyways, a uh, place when you might want to use this, oh, and also just for a can, it could be, you know, it could be anything. What I like to do is just I take one piece of ammo and make a stack by itself, you know, it's because I don't, it's just one piece of ammo, who cares, you know. Um, and again, I align and then I drop the can and warp out pretty quickly. 
Boss takes a while to walk, but you know, the sooner the better. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. You would want to use this technique, and I'll also I work to the 500 bookmark. And I make sure that I approach the bookmark. Um, you, when you warp, you land 2.5 kilometers away from your warp endpoint. And I want to make sure that it's kind of as accurate as possible. Although at this point, I've you know gone through a number of warps um, to different bookmarks, and I didn't always you know realign to the bookmark or make sure it was exact. But I guess over you know five warps, it probably averages to be in a straight line. Um, anyways, uh, some some in some cases, it's really important that you reapproach the bookmark and get the bubble positioning exact. But I don't know if this is one of those cases. Also, the bubble will anchor like one kilometer off of you, so it's never going to be exactly on the bookmark. Um, but anyways, you would want to use this technique, especially in situations where people are warping between passes or from a pass to a high set hole where they're otherwise safe, you know, because like if, say, you're warping straight to a high set hole, you land on the hole and then you jump out. If um, you're warping from a high set hole to your pass, you can, if you get tackled on the hole, you can usually just burn back to the hole. Most of the time you'll be within one or two kilometers, if not within jump range immediately. And um, if, if, you know, if you warp off instead, then, you know, you made it to your pass and you're safe. Another advantage of Tech 2 bubbles, by the way, is that they anchor very quickly. So, you know, I anchored the bubble, I warped to the hole, I turned around and warped back, and the, hole, the bubble was already up. And you can see that, um, even though, I mean, I guess I've warped directly to the bookmark, but, uh, you know, this, this looks like it'll be an effective, um, an effective bubble. Uh, and then this, the situation that happens, like, you might want to, you know, if you have small children, you might want to cover their eyes here, but, um, What's actually happened here is the call has been made that one of the Tengus is coming back. So I run over to the POS and um, I guess at this point I'm kind of panicking a little bit because the heavy tackle Stratios, you know, the, the tank, is in the other hole, but he's currently being swamped by real life. So I'm, you know, trying to decide, well, what am I going to do, you know? Am I going to try and, and kill this guy myself? I know it's not really possible, but it sounds like my scout might be able to come back during the middle of the fight, but I've, you know, I've shot Tengus on a bomber before, and the Tengu will shred a bomber pretty quickly, so really this is all just a result of me panicking, like what you're seeing here. I I don't know, I think I was trying to eject a can or something to work as a decloaker, but I doubt that, you know, the Tengu's cloaky anyway, so that was pretty senseless, that whole situation. Um, and then, you know, I don't want to, I don't really want to be in the bubble, but I do kind of want to be in the bubble because I want to make sure that I get a good tackle on the guy. Sometimes you would, you know, normally you would like set a tag maybe above the bubble or something so that you could, you know, grab the person as he lands. And here he's, the Tengu's on scan and um, it lands, but there's really nothing that I can, can do to it. You know, like I said, even if I tackle it, but I'm sort of panicking and, and not thinking straight here. Um, so when it lands, well, I guess we'll see in just a moment here. I guess I could just, just wait for it. You know, he's on scan, so he's about to land. So here he is. He lands, and he hits the edge of the bubble. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not even sure I wanted to cloak here, but I go ahead and to cloak, and then I warp. I, I actually um, lock the bubble, and I see that, so I start locking the ting. I'm like, oh, well, I'll just, you know, I'll ignore that. And then I lock the Tengu and I go to scram it, but I accidentally scram the bubble itself. And uh, at that point, the Tengu's already warped off. You can see I really had very little time for, for actually scramming the Tengu there. Um, he warped shortly after I locked them, so that was, uh, that was a big mistake on my part. But ultimately, in this situation, it was kind of a moot point, because what would have happened is I would have pointed the Tengu, and then... Um, you know, he would have locked me back, and then like two volleys, I would have had to warp off, or you know, I might have just died. So ultimately, I mean, that's it's pretty embarrassing. And uh, you know, they, I mean, look at it this way: you know, if you're newer to the game and just thinking about doing this sort of style of gameplay, you can actually be pretty terrible at it and still get a pretty, you know, pretty decent kill board off of something like this. And I mean, not that kill boards the end of the world or anything, but uh, you know. I, I do pretty well for myself. In fact, I use this technique um, of placing the stop bubble on a boss um, a couple weeks before this, and I grabbed an iter on that was worth uh, about a billion of this. I had something like a billion of this in blueprints, or at least they sold for a billion. I don't actually know what they were worth, but you know, I mean, um, 
it just goes to show that, you know, even if you're bad, <laughs> you can still have some sort of success with this style of play. Uh, and then, you know, what happens after this is the Coercer is still salvaging on the C3, so, you know, I'm hoping, of course, that it's kind of insane to think that it might actually happen, but I'm hoping that the Coercer will actually get caught in the stop bubble as well. And um, these guys, I mean, that ends up not being the case. These guys actually, um, and this will demonstrate, you know, one way to circumvent the, um, the stop bubble, but you actually just have attack on your pot. So you can see the Coercer sitting there. 500 or so kilometers above the pus and then you just warp down. So if you're worried about something like this, you can just have attack on your pus somewhere and warp to that instead. Although you may want to have several because if people see you warping to attack, they may, you know, figure out what it is and then end up placing the bubble on um, on the attack as well. So, you know, just be wary of this. And another another way to counter it if you have the manpower is just to have somebody always scouting the um, the POS itself, because the bubble does have to be on grid with the EPOS in order for the trick to work. Uh, anyways, hopefully, um, you know, this is insightful for some of you, and you can go and try it out, and, uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions, or use it to, you know, any degree of success. Also, the Tengu here lands, um, and possibly he was already in system, so he just landed from somewhere else. There's, um, there's also another technique that I'd like to show which involves placing a stop bubble off grid and that one is much more advanced and I doubt that there are very many people at all who um, know about that or understand how that works but look for that in an upcoming video I need to you know, always want to make sure that I actually use the technique that I'm showing whenever I show it in kind of like a quote-unquote real-life situation so I'm going to wait until I can actually do that, and but then once I do that, I'll go ahead and, and post kind of a follow-up video to show that, that technique, which is uh, really an interesting technique and, and actually even more useful than the one that I've just shown here.